Uh, I would like to say I'll make it, uh, I'm like to give me this opportunity to present my work on um, Mesh RDS project, it's a collaborative project. I know the schedule is pretty high, so it's very, uh, uh, I enjoy this opportunity to share this uh, resource with the community. So, I'm from Hotcam NCBI, primarily working on Hotcam RDF with Evan Bolton, he already talked about the, uh, the result earlier. So this MESH RDF project is a collaborative project. Uh, there's the NLM, National Library of Medicine, uh, Link Data work, uh, Infrastructure Working Group, and uh, both of us, Evan and I, join, participate in this uh, working group and contribute to this project. So we recently submitted a paper to Journal of Library Data and published this work. It has been approved uh, uh, by this Friday, so just approved. Good news. So this is the outline of my today's talk, so a lot of information. Briefly, I will talk about the MESH, uh, uh, why we want to do this MESH RDF project, uh, who is working on it, uh, what is the current status, and what we have learned the current challenge and what we can do next. So the motivation to do this mesh RDF, there are already, before we do this uh, NLM version RDF, mesh RDF, there are already six existing mesh RDF. So uh, each of them has different uh, uh, features. So you can see there are two NCBO uh, 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 mesh RDF and uh, of course uh, bell, to RDF, uh, bell to RDF mesh RDF. And uh, we started the feature of those resources, so they have different uh, features. So, uh, so those here the list of the uh, desired uh, desirable characters uh, of uh, authority uh, uh, mesh RDF resource. So we want to be to be complete, uh, usable, uh, linkable, uh, current, and uh, available to download and uh, Sparkle query endpoint of course. Um, so. Uh, why NLM want to do RDF? Before NLM want to do RDF, Parkham do the uh, Parkham RDF uh, uh, a couple of years ago. So uh, um, and NLM also uh, try to uh, uh, they work with the Library of Congress. They have the Big Frame uh, project. It's also an RDF project. <coughs> so they want to. Uh, uh, there's some synergy there. So uh, having the PubCam RDF and the BigFrame RDF and the Mesh RDF prototype, uh, which has been published a couple of years ago by Olivia and his postdoc Rainer, uh, NLM wants to do a, a Mesh RDF as a pilot project uh, in this uh, NLM uh, Link Data Infrastructure Working Group. So by doing Mesh RDF, they can uh, uh, develop uh, some infrastructure, uh, study some best, best practice and uh, recommend uh, other NLM uh, resources to do RDF. And this is the list of working groups. So you can see this is a really uh, heterogeneous working groups. We have uh, Evan and I come from NCBI. There are other people from MESH, uh, from uh, PubMed uh, indexing group, and uh, other people. Um, so a lot of people are working on this project. So it's the Mesh RDF first launched uh, in 2014, that's the first beta release, and uh, we have uh, pushed out the second beta release uh, this year in May, and the final, uh, the official release will be in fall 2015 uh, this year, so it will be soon uh, uh, officially uh, uh, released, announced. Um, so uh, this Mesh RDF is a pilot project in uh, this NLM uh, uh, infrastructure working group. They want to study the best practice. They want to uh, know the, also the feedback from the community, the, 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 the partner, uh, want to learn how this Mesh RDF resource can be used by, uh, by others. So like, like I said, this is the, currently is the second beta release and it will be uh, fully uh, uh, it's updated to uh, MESH 2015 and uh, uh, soon you will see the official announcement, the, the final release in fall. So, so here is a, a general review of MESH. Uh, so if you do uh, um, literature indexing, you must be familiar with MESH. It has uh, like 16 categories. Uh, 
uh, there's a chemical category, disease category, clinical treatment, something like that. Uh, those vocabulary, those uh, terms are defined, well defined, uh, are included uh, in this vocabulary. So it's a, uh, uh, I forgot to mention, uh, it's a three, yeah, here, it's a, a three tier uh, structure. The first tier has uh, three component, uh, descriptor qualifier, uh, SCR, uh, supplementary concept reaper. Uh, and the descriptor also can be interpreted as the uh, he uh, heading, mesh heading, qualifier the subheading. So descriptor can be a chemical or disease. Uh, qualifier can give you some context of this uh, uh, descriptor mentioned in this literature. Like qualifier, there are 83 qualifier. Qualifier can be like a uh, adverse effect. So the descriptor is a chemical and qualifier is a diverse effect. You know, this compound adversity is fact is talked about in this mesh, or in this PubMed abstract. Um, so this uh, the mesh is a three tier uh, structure. The first tier is descriptor qualifier SCR. Second tier is concept. Third tier is term. So one descriptor can have, or uh, one descriptor group, uh, a, 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 a multiple concept, one concept group, like multiple terms. Uh, so that's basically the mesh structure. So when they do mesh RDF, we basically transform, literally transform the mesh XML to the RDF. So we have a XLT a, a, a code to do the transformation. Um, why to do this? So first, when mesh, uh, when people uh, generate mesh or it, uh, uh, create this resource, they they will primarily use to for PubMed indexing. So it's supposed to uh, to be a close vocabulary for PubMed indexing. But later on, we found people use MESH in different way. So they can use MESH to uh, build vocabulary. They can use MESH to index curriculum or index uh, other uh, uh, literature collection. So there's multiple uh, other use cases that were not expected at the beginning when they created MESH. So now we want to open MESH, uh, open MESH data. Uh, so we do this mesh RDF, uh, and it's literally or uh, completely come from the mesh XML. So when you look at the mesh XML, we do the transformation. There's a uh, XML uh, a tag, or uh, we just uh, make it as a, a, a predicate uh, to do this uh, RDF uh, RDFization. And you can see this, this is basically how we do uh, uh, mesh RDF. You can study all of this uh, uh, at the mesh RDF website. The, I'll show you the id.nlm.nh.gov mesh. You can study, there's technical documentation. You can read all about this. So this is the website. And there's a Spark endpoint, there's FTP download. There are also technical documentations. And this is the Spark endpoint. Uh, this is the low star. Front end low star uh, Java uh, apps, so developed by uh, EBI group. We just uh, fought their uh, uh, project and we made some uh, uh, changes. We, uh, we need to dereference URI, so we add some uh, redirect rules there. So there's a uh, sample uh, Sparkle query. This is how we do uh, RDF. We transform XML to RDF. We put it on uh, in virtuoso and front end uh, low star, and we also support FTP. Uh, download. You can you can either download or get a Sparkle endpoint. So there's some challenge to do mesh RDF. So people talk about this. I will go through this, but not in detail. If you want to talk about detail, can talk about later. On. So the predicate: Do we should we use the existing uh, vocabulary, or we need to create our own? There's some discussion. We finally decide to create our own. And uh, BQ here, the descriptor qualifier here. In other words, the heading, subheading combination. There's a lot of combination, this a lot of combination. Do we need to expose, yeah, expose all of them? So finally, we decide just to expose the allowed uh, decal pair. There's also her, uh, mesh is, uh, has a uh, multiple tree hierarchical structure. Uh, whether those structure predicates should be transitive. So the transitivity is also need to be, uh, be carefully studied. So if you look at mesh, mesh has multiple tree, not single tree. So tree can overlap each other. But in this case, the, the in the middle you see in the middle you see uh, I, this 
this descriptor in the middle of two trees. So when you, if you allow transcripti uh, trans uh, transcripti, so this this can be transcribed, this can be uh, as a child of this node. So is that true? That's not true. So we need to take care of that. So basically, a descriptor tree, we don't allow transitivity. Uh, we allow transitivity in uh, a tree node. And uh, other challenges version. So we match updated uh, on a yearly basis. Uh, we, uh, so there's a lot of discussion there. So basically, finally we decide, so uh, we provide a current match. We provide a, 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 a different year match in another graph. So we separate them. Also the URI, we provide the current URI. We also provide a different version of URI, different year version of URI. Um, mesh XML doesn't provide, the, doesn't tracking the change. So if a term, our concept, deprecated, uh, and there's a new one, replace it. So mesh XML doesn't reflect it. So you cannot find this uh, redirect to the uh, from an old uh, concept to a new concept, you cannot do that. But we can, what we can do, we can tell this concept is deprecated. So you will not get a full four uh, error. You, uh, instead, you can get uh, this concept is deprecated. So this is about versioning. Uh, so this beta, the second beta release, uh, updated to 2015 match. And um, uh, we changed a little bit the schema. And uh, um, we also add the multiple, multi-lingual uh, version of mesh. So this this data comes from UMLS, not in mesh. So we basically add this information to mesh. Uh, we, we try to support a multiple uh, language version. And the production release is supposed to uh, uh, to be in fall 2015. So external use uh, cases, there's a couple of uh, beta uh, uh, Mesh RDF beta partner, uh, I show here, uh, bio to RDF, uh, Elsevier, Link City, uh, Mail Clinic, they all passed uh, the Mesh RDF. Uh, also, Parkham RDF already integrated uh, with Mesh RDF. Uh, uh, we, uh, from the integration, we can get uh, uh, Medline uh, indexing and get the pharmacological uh, action uh, annotation. So, uh, here is the uh, case of Elsevier. So basically, the integrated mesh, and uh, you can say not only mesh, other vocabulary. They got over three million uh, uh, terms and one million uh, bi uh, bioconcept, and uh, they are in different classes. And they can su uh, uh, support the similarity search and uh, the VT verification. This is the use case. The other uh, use case, this uh, this uh, heat map, you can track the usage of mesh RDF download and uh, URI. Uh, the referencing from there, you can see uh, which results are using mesh. Next step, so we want to do more uh, testing, uh, internal, external, and uh, we want to get feedback. If you want to give us feedback, you can either go to uh, this mesh RDF uh, website or go to our GitHub uh, project. There, you can uh, uh, bring up your topic, uh, uh, like start an uh, issue. Uh, there, uh, talk about how you want to use Mesh RDF in your resource or in your platform. So with that, I would like to take questions. Thank you. Thank you very much.